January 17th of 1997, just two years after we had fought to stay open, I received a phone call in the wee hours of the morning, and it was Father Rick, and he said, the church is on fire. We're losing it all. It was just chaos. People were just hugging each other and crying. It was like uh, losing a family member. I mean, it was just a building, but it was one of the saddest times of my life. When you think about what went on in there, the experience of faith, then it was important, and it broke your heart. You can still see the flames. They would go up around the wooden cross that, that we still have over there. The cross didn't burn. Now that was God showing us if things are going to be okay, everything's going to be fine. A building burned, okay? It was a building. It didn't burn the church down, though. Exactly 40 months passed between the fire and the dedication. Literally an exile for this family of love. With no place to call home then, St. Luke experienced firsthand the reality of suffering, death, and resurrection. Christ died. He suffered and died. He really did, physically and horribly. But we don't stay fixated upon that in Christ Jesus. I mean, if, if, if all we thought about it was the sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, we'd have no hope. We'd have no reason to be here at all. And that wasn't going to happen at St. Luke. It didn't happen when they didn't get a school the first time. It didn't happen when the school closed. It didn't happen when we had to fight to stay open. And it sure as heck wasn't going to happen when we burned down. Kenneth Davidson drew up the plans for the new complex, passing away in 2003 shortly after its completion. His wife Loretta saw Christ work through him in the midst of what became his final legacy. He was designing a place where people came to pray and worship and love. It was like his spiritual dream. He wasn't going to give any part of himself over to negativity. And instead, he prayed for everybody. We are wounded healers, because when we allow God and Christ Jesus to heal us, then we are able to go forth and heal other people as well. Living the faith then? Preparing for the sacraments in your neighbor's kitchen? Celebrating mass at the Knights of Columbus Rental Hall every Sunday? A Catholic rock band to spread the gospel and raise money. I can make a difference in this world today. Even an outdoor marriage on the grounds of the old sanctuary. It all actually happened. The family is the strength of our church. Just like your family at home, your mom and dad and brothers and sisters, everybody felt that God was going to take care of us. It would let us rebuild. Jesus said he would tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days. He is a temple. He is the one who created everything. The light of faith began to shine through the rubble of fear and despair until on June 10th, in the great Jubilee year 2000, it was finally time to rise from the ashes. Great and holy things are afoot here and Father Birding has led you. By God's own will has this been done, and it is truly a marvel in our eyes. And so for the last time this Easter season, for the last time of our exile, we proclaim Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Passing on the faith is so important. Um, not always, well, never easy in today's culture. Really, it isn't. But God's will for us is to walk the footsteps of his saints anyway, to love with insane greatness. It isn't about just surviving with a new building. It's about thriving with a heart of merciful love. To feel that fire of mercy within us, there's a part of us that just can't not share it. Once you've been evangelized, or even a little bit, then we want to evangelize other people as well. Circle of life. Family of love. The same fire that's in your heart, to be able to take that to another person, it burns, but it burns to give new life. Adoration at St. Luke every Wednesday night has been the catalyst for my discernment 
and the discernment of many others. You need to get back to a Catholic environment. It's a time to worship together. We have to expose young people. We have to tell them so that someday as they get older, they can look back and say, I get it now. I'm still learning and I hopefully I'll be learning until the day I die. Bring it not just to Oklahoma, but to bring it to the world if we need to. I'm a mom, so I always think about my kids. You know, my kids get hungry and they have to be fed if they're gonna grow. And so too, your faith is something like that. It has to be nourished, it has to be nurtured. We're inevitably in life going to encounter um, crosses and challenges, and so the Holy Spirit with his gifts really um, helps us to maturity. It really broadened my horizons and helped me understand that the church is bigger than just Oklahoma. But the church is just as important in Oklahoma as it is in the Vatican. You may not have thought about it for years or months, but it was always there to support us and to bring us back. Because of the fact that we've been supported so good throughout our lives, we're now able to start giving back. And you look around and you see all of these new families, actually, young families, that are going to stay at St. Luke and they're going to grow in St. Luke. They've moved into the neighborhood. We've had to grow. We've had to redevelop our family. We've had to face the problem. Is it over? Or are we going to continue on as the family we are? I think you know the answer. For 50 years, we've continued on. That's family.